Now, this little little video I'm gonna shoot here today, uh, kind of explain what's going on. Working yesterday on the uh, fish aquarium cabinet and uh, using the shaper, and I got to noticing as I was using it, it started vibrating, making a lot of noise, and I thought, well, I've got a I've got a bearing going to the bed in the spindle there, I think. So I tore it down, pulled it apart. And sure enough, I had uh, had some bearings. I had a had a bearing problem with it back in the summer, back last summer. I had a bearing go to the bed, and I think it was just a manufacturing defect. It uh, uh, it looked like a looked like a place where they'd made a mistake. So anyway, yeah, while I had it down, I put two bearings in it. it it's got two bearings in the in the spindle assembly, and I went ahead and replaced them both with new bearings. Well, yesterday it started making snows again, so I tear it back down. And I find that these bearings are bad again, or one of them is anyway. I don't know if we'll be able to see this or not, uh, where we can see it or not. But this rubber shield that's on the on this bearing it keeps the dust out and stuff. It's been so hot that it's melted and it's deformed it around here. Uh, when I took the uh, when I pulled the bearings out of the spindle assembly, it was all full of rubber, melted rubber in there. Uh, I even got, got some of it left here so I can show you. Uh, there's where it shredded that that rubber seal that was on the outside of the bearing. Uh, so anyhow, uh, I go over to the local supply house over here where they sell electric motors, pumps, and bearings, and various things. Uh, anyhow, he, get, he looks up the number and he informs me that the last place that I bought these, these new bearings from back in the summer gave me the wrong bearings. These are low speed bearings. They're for like an electrical motor, you know, run 1750 RPM, maybe 3450. Because he said these, these bearings with the rubber seal here was rated, at, I believe he told me, at uh, 5000 RPM. Well, the, the original bearings that came out of it was a steel shield like this. Uh, I didn't think nothing at the time. I thought maybe the rubber was even better. Uh, keep the help keep the dust out. Although it is, it is somewhat guarded from from dust and chips the way it's made. But anyway, uh, the guy down at the motor shop says no. It's two different two different kinds of bearings, even though they're the same the same size. Internal out and uh, external diameters are the same size. It's two different bearings. This is a high speed bearing. Uh, of course, this is, this is one of the originals. It was still good, uh, but it's a high speed bearing and it's rated at 15,000 RPM. Well, my shaper is two speed at 7,500 and 9,000. So uh, he's able to sell me two new bearings. I got me two new ones that are high speed, uh, metal shield, 15,000 RPM. So uh, didn't get the video taking this thing down and taking it apart. I, I, if I thought a little bit further ahead, I guess I would have. It might uh, be of interest to somebody to see one of these things tore down and the bearing replaced on it. So, But anyhow, I've got it tore down here, and uh, I'm going to cut the camera off and finish cleaning it up. Make sure I've got all that old rubber and stuff out of the housing. See, this is the actual actual housing that the spindle gets assembled in, and the bearings go in it. And then it goes down into the, your lifting mechanism, and the belt goes on. And... Uh, maybe I can, can show you some of that if you're unfamiliar with it. But anyhow, I'm going to switch the camera off and I'm going to clean this thing out, clean it up real good. And then uh, maybe i turn the camera back on and, and uh, let you see how it goes back together. It turns into, from all these pieces, into a complete assembly for the shaper. Okay, i got this thing cleaned up a little bit here. Got all the rubber cleaned out of it. Let's see if we can't start assembling it right here. Uh, this may or may not be of interest to people. I don't know. They, a lot of people don't own a shaper, but if uh, if some do, they might find it uh, useful to be able to uh, see how to work it. All right, our first burn. Go on here. You have to. Have a little persuasive action here. I'll tell you what. Let's do. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and replace the top piece of it here. Clean it off.
when that when that uh, when that thing overheated and uh, it went to melting that rubber and slinging it out all over everything, it just coated everything and that melted rubber. It's a barrier to get off. So that's your snap ring, it holds our top plate in place right here. Now we'll have one bearing go on. Brand new, good bearing. Now, so we're we're a, we're a press fit. I don't have a press, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take in uh, maybe this right here, and I'm gonna drive it down here with a hammer. It's not gonna be real tight, and when you do that, you can't. You can't be putting pressure on this race, the external race where the bearings is. When you drive on a bearing like that, you got to you got to put your apply your pressure to the inner race here where you're going to be pushing it down on the spindle, not out here. And this is a spacer that uh, that locates the two bearings when the thing's assembled. It's when you put the assembly together, so it locates the two bearings so it keeps them the proper space apart. You can put both bearings on there with a the spacer and then tighten your nut down and you can tighten them up and, uh, and have your bearings located in the correct place. Okay, now I'll just use this uh, oxygen sensor socket right here. It's broke anyway. <laughs> so we'll put it on here and we'll drive this bearing on down and seat it properly. So now we're, we've got the bearing all the way down and the top on it. So now we're looking good. Now this assembly we can put together, the bearing goes down in here and then our screws go back in the top to hold it together. So we've got them laying here. This is going to snug them down a little bit to begin with. All right. Now, now here, here's the spacer I spoke of a while ago. It goes in next. And then this bearing goes on. This locates it. Like I said, this this determines the spacing of the bearings that spacer in there does. So we'll drive this down until it's tight against the spacer. You can hear the change in the sound when you're driving it. So now we drove up. See, we've got our spacers in there. We're good and free. It turns good and free. Smooth. New bearings is smooth. Double check. Good. Now we can take it over here and uh, finish assembling it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is uh, we'll clamp this thing up in the vise where it can't turn. Do a couple of flat spots on this edge of this spindle assembly here. Let's clamp it up there where we keep it from turning. real tight. Alright. Now, now what we've got here is we run with another spacer and then we have a key, this little keyway that goes in the pulley and that's uh, what keeps it from spinning on there. It's keyed. Wipe some of that dust and grime off of this pulley. So anyhow, key slips in here. 
in the groove like this. And the pulley goes on. So now we're keyed. And what we've got here is a lock, which it goes on in this same position with the tab down into the groove. And then we've got the nut. Now what this, this normally this nut uses a spanner wrench to tighten it up, but I don't have a, I don't have a spanner that fits this, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Uh, just use a big pair of power channel locks and it don't have to be extremely tight either <clears throat> we only need one place for it to come up and lock <clears throat> I think we got it right there so we'll bend this lock up on here and it'll lock this thing it can't come loose on us and then we'll have had it assembled here Okay. All right, now we'll come back over here and we'll bend this lock up into place. Let's see if we can see that. So, what that uh, what that star does, we bend it up in this groove on the nut, and that keeps it from turning. It can't turn either way. So now we've got our we've got our assembly back together. It's running smooth. This is our three-quarter spindle. And that's the way it goes together, and then it drops back down in the adjusting mechanism on the shaper over there. Put the belt back on it, and it's good to go. So uh, I'm going to take it over here and put it in, and uh, we'll uh, fire it up and test run it. Okay, I'm going to try to get down here on the back of this shaper, uh, if I can, and hold the camera somewhat even close to steady, and uh, show the inner workings of this thing. I know it's kind of dark in there, and it's probably going to be hard to see on the camera, but nonetheless, uh, this is the spindle assembly here that we just put the new bearings in. Of course, we've got the motor, motor here and the belt. I've got it all back together. So uh, I just wanted to show a shot of that if, it's, if I'm uh, able to get one there in the dark. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna get back up here and put the camera back up on the on the stand and uh, fire this thing up and see if we've uh, improved on it any. Uh, bound to be better. <laughs> Bound to be better than it was. So, uh, I don't know how much you'll be able to tell on camera here, but uh, I don't have any cut or anything on it yet. I just uh, just set it up there and put the spindle back in it. And now we'll turn it on and see what it sounds like. Oh, yes, much better, much better. Good smooth running now. Yeah, now you just hear the belt whining and stuff. Test in reverse. I believe we've got it and ready to go back to work. I don't know how many folks might be interested in that or not. Uh, like I said, I, I know there's a lot of people who don't have a shaper, but uh, I was down anyway and uh, I'm kind of in between some projects. I was waiting for some glue to dry on the, uh, the top and the for the uh, cabinet for the fish aquarium. And uh, I got three or four other projects going on and uh, I had to make a trip to trip to town for the bearings and uh, that sort of thing today. So it's kind of been up in the air. I thought I'd just go ahead and take a little extra time to shoot a little video on the process of putting these bearings in. I know I didn't go into it in detail and uh, Lord mercy, I'm not an instructor anyway, so uh, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend anybody doing anything they see me do. Uh, sometimes I just uh, uh, walk along with my eyes closed, feeling how I go. <laughs> anyway, I uh, did get the shaper going again, and uh, I'm glad of that. Uh, I use it a lot, and uh, uh, 
glad to have it back up and running. So uh, we'll get back into uh, get back into finishing these projects full force tomorrow. Got some more coming in, I think. And uh, uh, if I ain't careful, I'll I'll get behind. Anyway, thanks for watching.